Today, we are going to be going through the 1000 plus IQ plays. These are things that you can do within EAFC Ultimate Team, which will put you ahead of pretty much 99.9% .9 of players within game. Number one, head over to today's video sponsor, U4GM. U4GM offers cheap, fast and reliable EAFC coins so that you don't need to grind out Ultimate Team. You can just buy coins on the platform and the account that you have and use those coins to go for players or even packs, maybe even draft if you want to treat yourself. Simply use the link in the description down below, select your platform, select how many coins you would like. And to make this even better, if you use Fnatic at checkout, you'll also get yourself a 5% discount. Thank you U4GM for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back into the 1000 IQ plays. Firstly, I recommend that you get a loan team. Now, you may think that there's no reason to go and get this, especially if you already have a godly ultimate team, but a lone team is still worth having. It's inevitable at some point this year, you will get a lone player, whether it be a gift, a pack, or maybe even part of SVCs. It's going to happen. And when you get a lone player, it's certainly worth using them within your main team as you play in online. Division rivals, champions playoff, or even the finals. Once you get them down to their last contract, do not use them. Do not waste this opportunity. You can then use that player into a loan team where that loan team is only used for game modes such as friendlies and moments. Game modes which do not count contracts. Now on paper, these are loan players. However, as their contracts never go down, if you're using them correctly, it's like you own them forever. And this could be big, especially if you're using your rewarded players at the beginning of the year, where you have Mbappes, Haaland's, Sam Kerr's, high-rated icons, the various special cards. You could have a much better team on paper with a loan team than a typical ultimate team, which you would have to pay for or pack. This is massive, especially within friendlies and when it comes to various challenges throughout the year. And number two, we need to talk about evolutions. Evolutions is the new game mode this year and still people are learning it, but there is already a clear way in which you can use evolutions to upgrade cheap overpowered players to make them even better and of course help your team. However, there's another aspect of this where you can upgrade players just for the sake of upgrading them so that you can improve their overall rating ready to go and use for the various SBCs. There will always be SBCs that require a certain rating, certain nationalities, certain leagues, certain teams. And maybe it will even link into chemistry. One of the easiest ones to achieve with the new evolution system is rating. If you can upgrade some bronze and silver players to be a much higher rating, it makes completing these SBCs so much easier. And it's still very early days, but potentially we could even see SBCs that specifically require evolution players and of course you do not want to be giving up the best of the best so our recommendation is to complete evolutions as a split you want players that you're going to use within your team so you're going to save the best evolution challenges for the cheapest as well as the best players within ultimate team however the other ones you may just want to upgrade a few odd players here and there something as a bit experimental just to go and save them in the background for any other challenges that may arise within the future and don't forget that there will be evolutions and there already has been where you can upgrade evolution players and number three we need to talk about cycle investing there is a cycle that we tend to go through and if you follow these investment tips you're going to make millions of coins not just this year but every year as long as ultimate team remains somewhat the same you should be buying into SBC fodder whenever it's cheap. And at the time recording this video, it is certainly cheap. You can buy 83 rated, 84, 85 rated players for about 1,000, 2,000 coins. Those 83 and 84s, you can get closer to that 1,000 coin mark. This is cheap, especially considering once an SBC does release, there will be an increase in demand for these types of players as they're going to be needed for the overall rating. And of course, when ratings involved, you need to be going for players of an equal, if not higher rating. And this isn't just 83s, 84s and 85s. It can go a lot higher. There are some 88, 89 and 90 rated players, which are also looking fairly cheap. 
by one of each player, store them to your club. Now I can't tell you when it's going to happen, I just know it will happen that there will be an SBC which requires a rating. When that happens, these players will increase where you could either sell them on or you can go and use those for that SBC to complete that challenge a fraction of the price compared to everyone else. But the real cool thing here is the aftermath because eventually that SBC will be taken away. Demand will go down for these 83 plus rated players, which also means their prices will also go down. It's at that point in which you need to buy back into them. When everyone else is selling, that's when you need to be buying. You buy back into them, hold them, and then do this over and over again. This can happen 10, 20 times every single year based on the various promos and challenges which do get released. So time it correctly, learn the price of these players, buy into them, and go through this investing cycle. Number four, you should be preparing for major events. We all know that there will be a promo every single Friday. We get team of the weeks every single Wednesday, but you need to be holding off for the big ones. For example, we know typically that with Black Friday, player prices take a dip. So it's a good idea just a few weeks before to potentially sell off some of the players that you're not using just to go and claim back those coins you have and maybe even make profit on some of the players. This is also going to be the case with team of the year and also team of the season. But preparing doesn't just mean about selling players, it's also about buying players. You may want to go and get some of those fodder items that we just mentioned before, especially if they're already close to being at their cheapest. And of course, we can't forget that there are benefits to saving packs. You can complete challenges, go through division rivals, go through champions, go through squad battles, whatever it may be, grind packs, send them to the store and not open them. You can just keep on stacking each and every single one. Eventually, you'll get to 100 packs saved and the number will not increase. It will still say 100 or I believe it caps out at 99. However, you can keep on storing packs. The packs themselves are still saved. And this helps when a major event does finally come around, such as Team of the Year, you can then open potentially hundreds or even thousands of packs for that promo in hopes to actually get one of those Team of the Year players. And number five, you need to know when to stop playing various game modes. There is a limit. There are some with an actual limit, such as the Champions Final, where you can only play 20 games and it can only be done on the weekend. But there's also other game modes, such as Division Rivals and Squad Battles, where there becomes a point where it's no longer worth playing. With Division Rivals, once you get your three wins or seven wins, you really shouldn't be playing anymore, especially if you already have the 1,250 qualification points. For that week, you should then move on after that to go into the Champions playoffs. And if you manage to qualify for the finals, but yet the finals hasn't started, that is when you need to dedicate your time going through squad battles. Now, squad battles has a limit of 32 games for you to get the maximum points. You can carry on playing after that, but it's not worth doing so. In most cases, most people are not going to be able to play all 32 games. However, just play squad battles until the champions final starts in which you'll go through that and start this routine again. If you keep on playing division rivals when you could go to other game modes, you're simply not going to be able to make as much. Number six is objective stacking. There are loads of objectives for you to go through within game. And yes, naturally, if you just play this game, you could potentially complete a lot of these, if not most of them. However, the more efficient way is to go through your objectives, see what's there, note it down if need be, and then start to build teams where you're able to complete three, four, five, six, seven objectives at the exact same time. And this is certainly doable for a lot of them. In some cases, it may be scoring or getting assists with a certain player from a specific nationality or league, in which just include one of those players within your team. The cool thing as well is with a lot of these challenges, you can either complete them within division rivals, squad battles, or champions. So if you're not a confident player, you can just go into squad battles, play on semi-pro, and still reap the rewards. And at number seven, use your unassigned pile. We all know that you have the transfer market, the transfer list, and your watch list. However, you can also use your unassigned to store players. And this unassigned pile, there is no limit, although it will only show 50 players at any given moment. But the second that you back out and then go back in, there will be more players that show up. It's infinite. 
which means especially on certain trading methods such as a bulk bidder method if you're able to get loads of deals and this links back to a previous point for the example where preparing for major events we talked about black friday black friday is also a good time to trade as there are so many people buying into fc points and going through the lightning rounds there ends up being a lot of players available on the transfer market us traders can then go through and bulk bid on as many of these as possible and in some cases not just make a couple hundred coins profit per card but make thousands of coins you do not want to miss out on those deals because you're able to buy them much quicker than you are able to sell them that's where it becomes a good idea to keep bulk bidding max out your watch list wait for them to expire and then send them to your unassigned pile you can't list them because your transfer list is full so you'll back out and immediately start bidding again because now you've freed up the space within your watch list now it becomes slightly risky if these players are going down in value however in this example and what's happened in previous years we've been able to then sell those players over the following days for a gradually increase in price so you can stack hundreds potentially even thousands if you have the coins to do so within your unassigned pile so that you can potentially make hundreds of thousands and even millions of coins in profit over the following few days or weeks now of course it becomes annoying that if you do use your unassigned pile that you can't head over to the store and yes that is a downside but that just means that you need to be strategic with it. If you are preparing for a major event because you save packs, it, it does mean that you will need to open those packs before you start trading and sending players to your unassigned. You just need to figure out your routine. But anyway, here are the 1000 plus IQ plays which you can use to dominate ultimate team. If you enjoyed this video, then I highly recommend clicking the next video on screen. That video will show you how to go from zero all the way up to 100,000 coins within 24 hours. I hope you enjoy.